we're back in the apple trees again today. Uh, we just ran the sheep down the channel for the morning and we're going to be gathering up some windfall apples because we've had some crazy winds the last few days and um, yeah, they're uh, working good for making some apple juice and then we just give the pulp and the rest of leftovers to the piggies. Um, and we've also got a couple buckets that we're starting to save up for piggies. Uh, last year when we moved here, uh, November 1st, we started collecting up the apples at that point and saving them in big our big black totes um, that we grow the um, potatoes in. Uh, anyways, we started saving them in those to feed over the winter. So this year we're going to do that again. But uh, right now the apples are still in good enough shape off the uh, trees to use for the juice. So we're doing that. Uh, I do want to make a couple more big vats of uh, apple cider vinegar because I had great success with that on my last batch. Uh, still not ready to use yet, but it didn't mold, it didn't rot. So I think that's a that's a win-win. You can see I'm going to turn here so that you can see the colors. Try and turn slowly. Fall colors are coming behind here. Puts me a bit in the shade, but it's... Uh, that's our little, that little strip there is our only little kind of maple bush on the property. Um, there's probably about 25 trees, um, sugar maples. So our long-term plan is to actually tap those just for personal use, not for sale. I mean, you'd never get enough to make it worthwhile, but so uh, we're gonna be researching probably some other people's YouTube videos. So if you got any good links for that, that would be awesome on how to make a um, evaporator. Um, or something, you know, I've seen people use the old oil tanks, um, different methods, wood stoves, things like that. So it's going to have to be outdoors, obviously. Uh, we're not building a sugar shack for this. So uh, anyways, that's something that's uh, on the radar for a to-do project. Uh, might be five years from now, but you know, you got to plan ahead. Uh, but anyways, I should uh, get back to work on this tree. It's almost stripped bare. And... Uh, I've almost picked everything off the ground, but we did get two buckets off of it yesterday and they were really tasty. So we want to make some more juice with the same tree. So hopefully I can get one more bucket and then I've got another bucket, which I will pick a different tree to try. And Chris is working on a different tree with his two buckets. So time to get busy. Uh, yesterday I came back to this tree. These little uh, yellow guys are actually surprisingly good. So we've got all two buckets already and you can see on the ground here, Lots more. So I'm going to pick up a lot of these guys. These windfalls were in great shape yesterday. So uh, no rot or any of that sort of thing. And the plan is, we've got two trees here that we've been uh, collecting from. This one and one that Stephanie's working on. And we're going to do the batches of apple juice. But we're going to keep it separate by tree. <laughs> because the, the very first batch we did was quite good. The second batch was kind of a mix of apples from a bunch of different trees. And it was okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't as good as uh, the first batch, which was all from one tree. In years to come, this, this particular tree is in uh, what will become pasture number three, one of our smaller ones. Um, but the plan is, or the hope is, it's not so much plan, it's hope, that uh, as we get going with this, it'll get a little easier to harvest some of these apples because the sheep in particular are very good at uh, maintaining a nice low ground cover so that should make it a little easier to collect and actually get at the apples. But uh, lots here, it's just kind of getting in under the tree to get it. So I got one bucket of these little guys. I have no idea how long I've been but it doesn't feel like it's been more than maybe five minutes. <laughs> so not bad. Um, and I got another bucket to, uh, to harvest here so I'm going to see if I can get a perspective here of uh, what I'm actually doing under this tree. Here I am, under this little tree. It's not really a very big apple, but it's been super productive. And these, uh, these apples are in uh, very good shape for windfalls. I think uh, I have a feeling in our most recent uh, windy day, windstorm, whatever you want to call it, uh, a lot of these came off quick. But uh, essentially, I am, at the moment, Basically down on my hands and knees. I guess I'm kind of laying on my side, but uh, <laughs> under this tree, which uh, we've never pruned or whatever, collecting these windfall apples. And uh, kind of one of those things, thinking about it here. A lot of people nowadays wouldn't even bother with this. They'd be like, oh, that's too much work. Spending a few minutes 
collect what we can and put it to use for us, which uh, I suppose whatever label you want to call it, and uh, we've actually been thinking about this, we probably are going to do a video on this very topic, but uh, whether you want to call it homesteading or prepping or foraging or small farming or whatever term you want to call it, this is how people used to uh, feed themselves. <laughs> Going right back to sort of the uh, I guess original homesteading movement, which really wasn't a movement by modern standards. It was more or less a uh, way for people to uh, from the east to try to build a better life for themselves, or at least that was the promise. Um, so anyways, I'm going to continue with this. I've just about cleared out what I can uh, reach right here. It's quite pleasant actually, out, so it's not, it's not too bad to be down on your hands and knees picking up uh, windfall apples. But yeah, I've pretty much exhausted what's right around me. So I'm going to move to another spot. So there we go. Two, uh, two more buckets of these apples, whatever these little guys are. Um, picked and ready to... Uh, Take it back up to the house. It's definitely starting to look like fall back here as I was in, uh, picking the apples. I had a little yellow rump warbler hanging out with me. Definitely a sign of uh, fall. We've noticed a lot more of them around. But uh, anyways, we'll uh, I guess head on to the job of uh, working on some fencing related stuff, which kind of probably falls more into the category of farming than uh, foraging etc but uh, still still jobs that need to be done to reach our eventual goal. So I'm gonna go see where Stephanie is because I know she moved to a different tree and we'll uh, regroup in a bit. Last post! Finally all posts are tampered in just in time because tomorrow is supposed to be pouring rain until Wednesday days, yeah. I think uh, on and off so we managed to get them all in. I forget how many there was 20 something. All the way down. This was our final side. Chris is there holding up that last one Which is all in So you can see here we're At the t-junction from pasture one just to show you here There's tons and tons and tons of apples on the ground. These ones are actually really tasty, too I ate a couple <laughs> there's a couple on the tree. I should pick them for um, Pie bring my little stick but anyways, we're a little sheltered from the wind, but it's been equally windy up here again. We're basically down to corner posts. We got to do the braces, but we only yeah. actually have one, two, three, four, five of those. Yeah, five wood braces to go in and then wire on. T-posts too. Oh yeah, and T-posts. T-posts. Oh, when we start listing it, then it gets bad again. Yeah. That's okay though. We'll <laughs> As I said, we'll get we're happy people. Winter. We're happy people. <laughs> we'll get it done before winter. We will. We're going to keep going. But anyways. Time to go back to the house and see what the kids are up to and uh, do some chores.